First prize in this week's Greater Detroit Open, a check for $23,000. Second place, $12,000. And uh, some co-proprietors that just have done an outstanding job. Oh, this place looks marvelous, Dan. They spent a lot of money fixing this place up, and it just looks wonderful. Facility just is uh, just absolutely beautiful here in Taylor, Michigan. During that time out, Mike and I were discussing that shot right there, maybe even the next one. You felt strongly about the fact that Norm Duke needed to come up with a couple of strikes here because Ryan Schaefer all of a sudden starting to get nice and loose and lanky on this pair of lanes. And Ryan throws that power ball, and when he starts striking, he may never stop. And Duke knows that. Duke now is trying to figure out a way to get the 10-pin out on this left lane. Mike, you made a, a very interesting observation. The last time when he left the half ten, I think you were dead right. He got the ball into the oil a little early, and it didn't react. Now this time, watch the difference. This is just a better quality execution. Gets it around a little bit into the dry, and now when it sucks to the pocket, it's just flush. Back to Ryan Schaefer in the seventh on a double down by ten, trying to get back to even. Oh. Oh. Side of that six-pin rip around the ten. But did you watch his body English on that? I mean, he wasn't sure it was going to strike. He got it in I, again. I think in the oil, these reactive resin balls. When you get into oil, they want to slide. You know, as Larry explained, they're turning sideways and going forward at the same speed. You know, he's going about 20 miles an hour. He's not really confident. He's looking only at the ten. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. My concentration. Well, if there is some consolation, at least at this point in time, it's the fact that he's bowling a very solid game. He's averaged only 186 in his other championship round appearances, far below what his capabilities are. He's got to get back right on the strike track though here, Dan. I mean, uh, Duke has lined up. It's just been striker tempting with, uh, with Norm. Needs a break. Got one, and the fact that there was nothing other than the 10 pin, but he couldn't knock it down. See, the reason that happened, Dan, was because of the solid 10. There was an emotional letdown. There wasn't the same intensity and and uh, concentration and quality of shot on that execution right there. You almost feel like you have to make up for a shot or maybe even overcook it because... If, if he'd have struck there, that 10 pin would have cost him 21 pins, and, and pro bowlers know that. Ryan Schaefer running out of time. Norm Duke would like to put the finishing touches on his second consecutive win. Like I said before, he knows how to play in match play competition. Like that one, the moment it left his fingertips. And he has moved ever closer to getting an opportunity to bowl Walter Ray. What's the follow through? Boy, I didn't like the follow through, but I sure liked the result. Poo. Bang. 259, still a possibility for Norm Duke, who started the championship round with a 279 game. Yeah, and I wonder what Walter Ray is thinking over there. Good question. He's probably thinking he's going to have to throw some strikes. Look at this, double teaming of the 10, and the entire posse couldn't get the job done. Well, he had a double teamed in the corner, but he got out of it. A trapping defense on the 10 pin, but no turnover. Now watch the head pin. We know that's one of them. There's the head, and it's a five. He had the one and the five going back up. To, that was the five that missed it first, and the head pin came afterwards. The five <laughs> touched it. Looked like a log rolling contest over there. That was still a match. Hey, Ryan Schaefer can take this out the sheet. He finishes with 227. That would make Duke strike the first ball in the town. The 
little wide, but he shakes him up and strikes on Lane Porter. I'll tell you what. If he can take it out the sheet here and get the 227, even if he doesn't win the match, it'll do wonders for his confidence. Everybody in the family probably react together. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's Team Schaefer right now. Well, they can. They all know how to keep score. Believe me, so they know what he needs. <laughs> it's a tremendous bowling family. Yeah, you're right. There's the big shot right here. Will he trust this one like the last one? Way right. That was out of bounds. Yeah. Went for the big sweeping hook. Norm Duke with a quick glance of the score, and Ryan already knows what the score is. See, see the, the problem with a controlled swing and a power swing like that is under pressure, you have a tendency to make things faster and jerkier and not as smooth. And, and the ball goes offline. Duke has a much more fluid swing, straighter swing. I would think, you know, just have a much better advantage under pressure. So Ryan Schaefer can't quite get the job done, but uh, you'll see two title fights when we finish up here. They're calling it a double championship tonight. Welderweight championship fights coming your way on top-ranked boxing from Atlantic City, New Jersey. And let's see, what would, uh, what would Norm Duke be? Would he be a welderweight? No. Oh, I don't think he'd be weight. up that high. Flyweight? Uh, that uh, category. Right? Let's see, Norm Duke's weight is 123, then, so welterweight's up around 140 something. So. Okay. <laughs> you have to pick up a few pounds. Yeah. Maybe he could fight with the ball. I'll tell you what, he can weigh anything he wants <laughs> right now. He's got uh, Walter Ray. He's got Walter Ray's attention right now. 279, now possible 238. And plus, Walter Ray knows what kind of a competitor and match play bowler Norm Duke is. But hey, if you're going to tie a record, one of the great, great records of all time, you might as well do it against a player of this nature. You know, I'll never forget when George Pappas won the Tournament of Champions back in 1979. He had to beat Dick Ricker. He said he wanted to bowl Ricker because Ricker, he thought, was the best at the time. And you know, at that point in time, Pappy was the first player to lead that tournament from start to finish and win on the television show. Yeah. Not an easy accomplishment, I can tell you that right now. Duke putting the finishing touches on a second straight win. Ryan up off the bench with a congratulatory handshake for Ryan Schaefer. A third place finish for the second year in a row. Well, maybe next year here at Taylor Lanes, the third time will be the charm for Ryan Schaefer. When we come back, championship frame. 